Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to start the refactoring of this component into reactive style and we are going to start by creating a proper service layer for our application. The service that we are about to write is going to be a stateless observable service, which is the first design pattern that we are going to cover in this course. To get this refactoring started, let's go back to the analysis of the current version of the home component. So as we can see, the component here is receiving the Angular HTTP client and the component also knows how to use the HTTP client in order to get data from the HTTP backend. The component knows what endpoint to call and it also knows how to process the HTTP response. Now, ideally, we would like to place this logic in an Angular service where it can be reused by other components of the application that also want to call the backend. So let's start with that. We are going to create here under our app folder a new folder that we're going to call services. Inside this services folder, we're going to create a new file that we're going to call courses.service.ts. Inside it, we are going to be defining a new class that we're going to call courses service. Now we are going to make this an Angular injectable and we are going to make it a root injectable of our application. This means that there will be only one instance of this service that is available to the whole application. The courses service is going to be using the Angular HTTP client in order to access the backend. So let's go ahead and inject the HTTP client here in our constructor. Now going back here to our home component, this is the logic that we would like to isolate in our courses service. Let's start then by removing here the HTTP client that will no longer be accessed by the home component. Instead, the home component will only know about the courses service. Now let's see how the home component is going to retrieve the courses data from this service. We are going to be defining here in the public API of our courses service a new method that we are going to call load all courses. And it's important now to discuss what type of API should this method provide. You might be tempted to try to build a method that simply returns here an array of courses, or alternatively that returns a promise of a course array. Now, that's not what we are going to be doing in this course. Instead, we are going to make this a reactive service. This service is only going to be returning observables. We are going to be returning here an observable of course array. So this observable that we are returning to the view layer is going to emit values over time. And actually, it will only emit one value if the HTTP call to our backend is successful. That value will be the array of courses. The home component, on the other hand, is going to receive the data from the courses service without knowing necessarily where the data comes from. It might come directly from the backend, it might come from an in-memory cache, from another service or component that is transparent to the home component. Let's then quickly implement this logic. We are going to be returning here a new observable that we are going to be deriving from our HTTP GET observable. Let's then access the Angular HTTP client Let's do a get call. We're going to be hitting the slash API slash courses rest endpoint as before. And this is already an observable. Notice that we still get here a compilation error. This is because the expected type is not the one that we have defined here. So this does not automatically return an observable of course array. Instead, we need to pass here to the get call, a parametric type, which defines the type returned by the HTTP GET observable. In this case, we know that the values emitted by this observable are going to be of type course array, and this fixes the problem. Now, even though the compilation error has been fixed, what we are actually returning here is not yet a course array. Here, we are returning the HTTP response without modifying it. So if we would run our program, we would see that this observable is emitting a value that looks like this, a JavaScript object with a payload property containing an array. 
So that's not what we want to return here. Instead, we want that the values of this observable are directly the course array and not an object containing a payload property. So what we're going to do here is we're going to transform this observable into another observable that emits the values that we need by using the RxJS map operator. So RxJS operators are chainable functions that allows us to quickly combine different observables in order to obtain different types of results. In our case, we simply want to create an observable that is derived from the one that we already have here. So we're going to be using the map operator, which is one of the most essential RxJS operators. Let's have a look at the diagram that explains how the map operator works. This is from the official RxJS documentation and this is known as a marble diagram due to the colored circles here on this type of diagrams that resemble marbles. Now here on top we have the example of one observable. This observable simply emits the values 1, 2, 3 and then it completes. Now how does the map operator work? The map operator is going to take as an input a mapping function. For example, this function here takes as an input a value and multiplies it by 10. What the map operator will do is taking the original source observable 1, 2, 3, map is going to create a derived observable, this observable here at the bottom. Now, the values of this derived observable correspond each one to the values of the input observable multiplied by 10. So as you can see, 1 times 10 becomes 10, 2 times 10 becomes 20, and 3 times 10 becomes 30. Let's then now take what we have learned from the map operator and let's apply it here to our program. So we have here an observable that is meeting as values this object and we want to map it to an observable that is emitting only the course array. So the value that we receive here is going to be the full HTTP response as we see here on the screen, an object with a payload property. Now, the output of this mapping function should return us only the course array. So we can return that by accessing here the payload property of the response. And with this, we have used the map operator in order to implement the load all courses method. Now we are going to return to the courses service multiple times throughout the course. What is important to retain right now is the type of API that we are building here. So our service layer does not return mutable data values, such as, for example, a course array directly. Our service layer does not return promises. Our service layer by design will only return observables to the view layer. Also, and very importantly, the data emitted by the returned observables is not kept here in our service. So our service is stateless, meaning that it does not hold any application data. The only thing that this service holds in memory is a reference to the HTTP client in order to be able to do the HTTP calls. Other than that, the data returned is only accessible by the home component and anywhere else in the application by subscribing to the returned observables. The courses service itself does not have access to the application data and does not keep it in memory. It's a stateless observable based service. Let's now see what is the best way for the home component to consume data emitted by this service. 